morning, good morning, listening audience. It is so good to have you all to tune in this morning uh, after, with us here at James Temple Church. First, giving honor to God, to the pastor of this church, Pastor Clifford Brown, here at James Temple Church in Dickerson, Texas. And we're back, back to sharing with you the word of God after not being able to uh, move forward with our live stream service. And I tell you, uh, with the way this weather has been going and all of the thundering and the lightning that has been taking place with it, and so we wind up having electrical power, in which we had part power in the church. We did not have the full power to operate. But now, praise the Lord, thank God for uh, those high-tech technicians, the electricians that can help solve the problem. So we are so thankful to be back live stream with you on this morning. And uh, first, uh, going to word of prayer before I get carried away. I'm so excited. Dear Heavenly Father, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you for being able to get here and be in the house of worship one more time, live stream, even though we're not at full capacity with all of the members here, but we thank you that you showed us a way to let us know that you are our way maker, and we Thank you, O oh Lord. We thank you. And then we want to say thank you for your son, Jesus. I mean, he, your, it, it was allowed for him to come here on this earth to show us what it is that we need to do so we can carry on your word, share it with the people, and to let them know that they need to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. Because daily, you keep showing over and over again that you are still in control. And we thank you, Lord, for those signs. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In Jesus' name, we all pray. Amen. Now, our uh, praise the Lord. We are patiently waiting on our Sunday school presenter on this morning, Missionary Stacker. So, you know, we just want to keep them covered on the blood, keep her covered, and that she will share with us. And I do want to share with you that our Sunday school superintendent here at James Tupper Church is District Missionary Laverne Dutler Brown. Uh, our Sunday school teacher is Elder Stacker, but Missionary Latanya Stacker is going to be our presenter on the, this morning. And we thank God for that team, the Stacker team. Because, you know, as they say, it takes uh, teamwork to make a dream work. And we thank God for them being here uh, to help share the good news. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and get into the reading of the lesson, lesson nine, August the 1st, 2021. And I was subject on this morning, salvation for all who believe. Salvation for all who believe. And our lesson is found this morning in Romans chapter 10, verses 5 through 17. Romans chapter 10, verses 5 through 17. Our Bible truth on this morning, Paul proclaims the good news that salvation is available to everyone. Salvation available to everyone. Memory verse, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so that memory verse focus is Romans 10 verse 13. Romans 10, verse 13. Our lesson aim, by the end of this lesson, we will support Paul's confidence in the salvation offered in Christ, feel, F-E-E-L, justified through our faith in Christ, and 
embrace with joy the possibility for all. Embrace with joy the possibility for all. And moving into the introduction for this morning. Born a Jew, Paul was highly educated in the Jewish faith and understood the doctrine, teaching, and workings of the law. His education, training, and love for the law contributed to his zealous opposition of Christians and their teachings. As a former prosecutor of Christians, he understood, let's talk about Paul, he understood how Zephyr calls could turn a person into a murderous opponent. After his dramatic conversion while traveling to Damascus to detain and imprison Christians, Paul became a defender of a faith he once despised. He became the apostle to the Gentiles and the one directly called to reach his former enemies. In addressing the believers at the Church of Rome, Paul fervently prays that his Jewish brothers and sisters will be saved. Paul understands their uninformed zeal and says he can bear record of their zeal without knowledge, which Paul knew from personal experience. Finally, Paul makes it clear that God plans to restore a remnant of Israel. He admonish, admonishes Gentile believers not to be arrogant about their faith in light of Israel's presence disobedience. I'm going to say that word again. Disobedience. And I'm saying that word again because it still exists today. Disobedience. Now I'm going to cut because our teacher, missionary, Latonya Stacker, is here and she is ready. She is ready to share a word with us. Missionary Stacker. Amen. Amen. Good morning, saints of God. Thank God for our first lady giving up, reading our introduction to our lesson today. Thank God for being in Sunday school one more time. Amen. We weren't here on the last uh, two weeks due to electrical problems, but praise God, our electrical problem has been repaired. Amen. And we are happy to be back in the sanctuary at uh, our happy hour time, as Elder Stacker would refer to, amen. amen. So let's get into our lesson. Our lesson on today is coming from the book of Romans, and it is lesson nine. Um, and today our, we're talking about salvation for all who believe. Amen. Thank amen. God for salvation. And all it takes is your belief in God to be saved. Amen. But before we get into this lesson, I want to do a recap of our last lesson and also a recap of chapter 9 of the book of Romans. So that way we can get a good foundation for today's lesson. Is that all right? Amen. So a recap of last week's lesson, which was justification through faith. Amen. And Abraham was justified before the circumcision not after the circumcision that's what uh that's that that show god his faith in god was tremendous amen because he didn't have to be circumcised to believe he just automatically believed god called him out from his kindred which was from ur of the chaldeans that's where he was from and told him to go to a place that i'm going to show you now you know it takes tremendous faith to go to a place that God does not tell you where you're going, but he tells you to go. And Abraham's faith was so tremendous in God, meaning his trust in God was so tremendous that he went on the word of the Lord. Amen. And so uh, Abraham was justified before the circumcision because 
God spoke to him, he believed, and he acted upon um, his belief. Amen? And because Jesus is our great sacrifice on the cross for all of our sins, we too now have justification, but only through faith, meaning only through our trust in God. We now have justification because of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. Amen? And in the book of Matthew, chapter 27, verses 50 through 51, at Jesus' death on the cross, the veil of the temple was rent in two, meaning it was torn in two. And by the, by the veil being torn in two, that signified that we no longer need to go to a high priest. Amen. Praise God. I don't have to go to a high priest to confess my sins to be forgiven of sin, right? Because Jesus is our ultimate high priest. He is unequivocally our ultimate high priest. Without question, without doubt, he is our high priest. He's the ultimate sacrifice for the sins of all who believe. Amen. Thank God for Jesus making the sacrifice. And we now all have uh, the grace of God to be justified, right, uh, by our faith in God, free from sin. Amen? So let's go into the recap of chapter 9 and the context of Romans chapter 9, which concluded with Paul's declaration that Israel has stumbled over, stumbled over the stumbling stone of Christ. What was the stumbling stone? Well, Jesus is the stumbling stone because they believed everything from Moses' law, but they, didn't, they couldn't believe Jesus, amen, that Jesus would be the, the, the Christ to save us from our sins. They were still stuck on the law, amen. But Paul quoted Isaiah chapter 8, verse 14 to them, showing them that Christ was the stumbling stone for Israel, but that all who believe in him will not be put to shame. Amen. All who believe in Christ would now be free from sin. They couldn't, get, they couldn't get the understanding of that because they were stuck on the commandments of Moses. Amen. The prior passage concluded with Paul's declaration that his people Israel had tried to become righteous before God in the wrong way. By relying on their attempts to keep the law, that's all they were focused on. If I keep the law, I'm good. Um, they had refused to come to God by faith in, in Jesus Christ. What they couldn't understand was the law wasn't keeping them. They still were yet in sin over and over and over again. The law couldn't keep them. All they could do was show them the wrongdoing, but it had not power to deliver from all sin. Amen. So now we're going to get into chapter 10, where Paul tries to describe, uh, gives them his heartfelt prayer that Israel might be saved, right? Despite Israel's commitment to saving themselves through works, why have the Israelites not confessed the lordship of Jesus and believed in his resurrection? It's not for a lack of hearing. Because Paul was preaching, right? Everyone up until the time of Paul got on the scene was preaching, Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming. So it's not that they didn't hear that Jesus was coming, right? They heard uh, that Jesus was coming, but they didn't believe in his lordship. Um, and, and it wasn't, and it was because their understanding, they would constantly disobeying the gospel preached by Paul, right? Paul will insist that though in, in the following chapter that God has not rejected Israel, that's where some of the Gentiles get a little misled. Who are the Gentiles? We are the Gentiles. Anyone who is not a Jew is a Gentile. You hear some people refer to uh, Gentiles as heathen. It's not your Aunt Esther's definition of heathen. Heathen just means anyone who is not a Jew. Amen. So the Israelites, uh, I'm sorry, that God had not rejected Israel. So remember, uh, as First Lady um, so eloquently put it, that we are not to be proud in our, in our faith in Jesus Christ, excluding the, uh, the Israelites, because the Bible says that a remnant of Israel will still be saved. Amen. 
um, he still holds out his hands to offer his salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. So faith, I'm sorry, salvation through faith in Jesus Christ is not only available to the Gentiles, but it's also available to the Israelites too, still yet to this day. How beautiful is the grace of God, right? Amen. So let's now get into our lesson from Romans chapter 10. Is that all right? Okay, so I'll read the preliminary scriptures and then we'll get into the lesson. Is that all right? Okay, so reading from Romans chapter 10, beginning at verse 5 through 17. For Moses described the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which uh, doth right, does those things shall live by them. And verse 6, but the righteousness which is of faith, speak it on this wise, say not in thine heart who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above. And reading from verse 7, or who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring Christ again from the dead. Verse 8, but what said it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if not, I'm sorry, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shall be saved. Amen. We, know, we all know that, right? For with the heart believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between Jew, remember that, and the Greek. For the same Lord over all, over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Verse 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And say, I'm sorry, shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they hear without a preacher? Remember that verse too, very key verse. Verse 15, and how shall they preach, very key verse, except they be sent as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel and bring glad tidings of peace. I'm sorry, of good things. I'm, ref I'm thinking about another uh, version. It says bring glad tidings of peace, but good things, they both mean the same thing. But they have have not all obeyed the gospel for Isaiah said Lord who have believed our report so then faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God all right now let's get into it let's break it all the way down <laughs> somebody said uh oh okay so um, we'll deal with uh, let me just try to get to my spot here Okay, so let's get into uh, chapter 10. I'm going to start at, attempt to start at verse 1. Amen. Just because I think it, it, it'll give us more of a context. So Romans 10 begins with Paul's heartfelt confession that he prays for Israel to be saved, not excluding Israel. And we should pray the same way that Paul prayed. Amen. We should pray for all mankind to be saved, including the Israelites, right? And I often would say, uh, pray for the peace of Israel. Uh, not only that they get saved, but pray for the peace of Israel. Why? Because the Bible says, when you see Israel compassed about with armies, what? The end is, know that the end is near. Um, being compassed about with armies, uh, com uh, they are surrounded by many nations who wish to harm them. So it's important that we pray for the peace of Israel and pray that they be saved. Amen. God does not intend to exclude them. It's just that right now, uh, blindness in part has happened to the Israelites because they don't believe Jesus. Amen. They only, they're stuck on uh, the law, stuck on the teachings of Moses. But uh, there's going to be a time where God will 
remove the scales from their eyes as he did with the apostle Paul and they will all see clearly well not all of them those who believe on Jesus Christ will see clearly and begin to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior amen so not only do we pray for Gentiles to be saved we also should pray for Israelites to be saved and he is eager for each of his Jewish brothers and sisters to believe in Christ he praises them for their enthusiasm for God though they are ignorant of how to reach God's righteousness through faith so they have a zeal for God but they're unable to grasp the knowledge or, on how to be saved through faith in Jesus Christ amen um, and instead of the Israelites continuing to try to be declared righteous by God their religious law keeping despite uh, hang on one second let me turn the page <laughs> despite how they continue to break the law they continue to wait for truth that they already knew to come down from heaven or up from the abyss meaning in the, in, up from the deep when Jesus Christ had already done both these things Paul repeatedly references the Old Testament scriptures because his attempt is to reach the Israelites because the Old Testament is all they all they knew all they relied on so he attempts to bridge the gap between Gentile and Jew amen by quoting the Old Testament scriptures uh, both directly and as an analogy to make his bottom line case about what is required to be saved amen so um, Romans chapter uh, 9 through 13 those verses are likely the most quoted verses that we've that we've heard in our Christian faith right I can remember being a babe in Christ hearing these same scriptures over and over and they're very prevalent to the Christian church today amen um, from this chapter remember we always talk about I mean, we quote it here at our church uh, almost every Sunday if you believe in your heart conf uh, confess with your mouth um, that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart meaning just trust in God in your heart not your heart that beats with four chambers not this heart but the total being of man uh, if you believe God in your heart meaning uh, in your total being in your soul if you believe him with your heart that God raised Jesus from the day you will be saved it is as simple as that uh, it's not like you have to do hocus pocus right uh, you, you don't have to uh, bring all these sacrificial offerings before Christ in order to be saved that's what they did under the law right under the commandments of the law for with the heart one believes and is justified remember not your not the four chambers of your heart that pumps blood through your body but in your soul Paul spells out that this opportunity to be saved by faith in Jesus Christ is available to everyone not to some people but to everyone right and without distinction between the Jew or Gentile when Christ looks at all of us uh, when we believe Jesus Christ and we're accepted uh, into the family of God by faith by the blood of Jesus Christ um, when God looks at all of us he doesn't see us as Jew Gentile black white he doesn't look at us like like we have an issue with in most countries today the black and white issue the racial issue God does not see us like that amen he sees us all as one under the blood of Jesus Christ um, the Lord that the Lord is Lord of all people and he gives good gifts to all who call upon him there's another scripture that says he reigns on the just as well as the unjust he is no respecter of persons what he has done for one he'll do for all amen um, everyone who calls upon him will be saved and in Romans chapter 10 verses 14 through 17 in those verses Paul shows how necessary it is um, for him to continue preaching the gospel 
Amen. And it is necessary for all of us to continue to preach the gospel, right? How will, how will a person get to learn about Christ through, through the preaching of the gospel? Is it just the preacher's responsibility to preach the gospel? No, it's all of our responsibilities to preach the gospel, right? Because once you get saved by faith in Jesus Christ, it, it should propel your heart to want to share the gospel, the goodness of the gospel with everyone. Amen. So we all have a responsibility to preach the gospel once you've been accepted um, by faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. And so Paul shows the preaching of the gospel regardless of the objection of those people who oppose him. So the preaching of the gospel is not, shouldn't be conditioned on those who oppose you. Because I, I, I can hear some people say, well, why don't share the, the gospel with, 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 you know, everyone? Because I don't know what to say. Well, you share your testimony. Amen. That's a good place to start. Share your testimony, why you believe God the way you believe him. Amen. And, and then people, you make people a believer based on your testimony. What did God do for you? How has he saved you? How has he blessed you? And, and that's what we should be, uh, that's what we, be, we should show people. Amen. Before they, believe, before they can believe, they must hear about him. How shall they hear? Amen. And in order to, in order for someone to hear, uh, they must be preached to. And before a representative of Christ can preach, he must be sent. Amen. Sometimes we underestimate uh, opportunities to share the gospel. We underestimate why we have been placed in certain situations. Many times it is an opportunity for you to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. We shouldn't take encounters with anyone for granted. We shouldn't take them lightly. Uh, because the Bible uh, commands us to, um, the scripture slip in my mind, when we meet strangers, we should, um, we should entertain strangers unaware because some, many of us have entertained angels unaware. Say, amen. Uh, so we should treat and treat strangers um, the same way. Maybe it's an opportunity to share uh, the gospel with them. Amen. So representative of Christ should be able to preach the gospel. He, sh he must be sent. And how do, you know, how do you know when you're sent to share the gospel with anyone? Well, when the blood of Jesus, when you uh, confess with your mouth, you believe in your heart and the blood of Jesus has covered your sins by faith, right? You've been sent, right? Because he says, go into the highways and byways and preach the gospel, right? Compel men to come unto Christ, amen? That all might be saved. He must be sent. Still not all have obeyed the gospel. That is, many people, especially Jewish people, have not believed in Christ, though they have heard the word of Christ. Um, why is this? It is because they haven't really heard. Uh, I'm asking the question. Is it because they have not really heard of the gospel? Paul rejects that idea with a quote from Psalms 19. He insists that the gospel of Jesus Christ is reaching the ends of the world, right? And even the Bible tells us that once the gospel reaches uh, every part of the world to the ends of the earth, right? Then the Lord will come back, right? Um, uh, for a remnant of those who, uh, who are saved, right? Once the gospel is spread all over the world, um, into the uttermost parts of the earth, then Jesus uh, promises to come back to redeem the church, right? In Romans chapter 10, verses 18 through 21, um, once they've heard, then they try to, they try, I'm, I'm sorry, once they've heard, then did they not understand that the Jewish people truly never comprehend that God intended to welcome all who come to him by faith? Um, evidently not. Paul quotes from Moses to show that they should have heard God's own words that he would one day make Israel jealous of those 
who are not nations. And the scripture says, um, I, I'm going to call those who are not my people and provoke Israel to jealousy. Who is not my people, meaning referring to the Gentiles, because the Gentiles, I'm sorry, the Jews were giving the orals of, oracles of God first. So they should have not only been uh, students of what they were hearing, they should have been able to share the gospel. They were, they were supposed to show the Gentiles how to live holy, right, based on the oracles God, of God that they had been given. But they failed to do that. So what God did is provoke them to jealousy by people who were not, who were not his people, meaning the Gentiles. So you see many Jews today, they, they might uh, entreat saints or look at the saints of God with disdain because how can you quote the Bible when uh, the Bible was given to us first? Well, God provoked you to jealousy, sweetheart, because you didn't accept Jesus Christ. But once Gentiles heard the preaching of Jesus Christ and we hear it correctly and we accept him by faith, we are saved. Amen. And so we are to be living epistles among not only Gentiles, but also to the Jews. Amen. How are we going to win the Jews? Well, we have to know what the scripture says and use the Apostle Paul's example of bridging the gap between the New Testament and the Old Testament, which they believe, right? So we can show them through the New Testament uh, and prove up the Old Testament scriptures that uh, the same God that raised Jesus from the dead uh, is the same God that, uh, that gave us faith in Jesus Christ through the blood of Jesus Christ by faith in him. That we have all power and justification. That's what we're talking about. Salvation for all who believe. Because now we're justified to do so. Amen. By the blood of Jesus Christ. So I have justification. God has given me the right to share the gospel, to handle the word of God, to uh, because I believe in Jesus Christ. So I'm justified to do so, right? And so are you justified to do so, right? As long as you hold the gospel, you esteem the gospel in right standing with God, meaning your heart is right, your intentions are right, then you are justified by faith to share the gospel with anyone. And anyone who believes the gospel um, can be accepted also into the family of God. Amen. Now, Paul quotes from Moses to show they should have heard God's own words that he would one day make Israel jealous of those who are not his, who are not nations. Then Paul references God's words in Isaiah 65, that he would be found by those who did not look for him, right? Talking about the Gentiles. We were once alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, right? We were alienated from, from, um, the, from, the, wealth of the, from the commonwealth of Israel, meaning they were entitled uh, to the oracles of God first. They held the scriptures first before the Gentiles ever knew anything about God. We didn't know anything about God. We didn't know that there was a God. We didn't know that there was a God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to worship. Uh, Gentiles worship idol gods. So uh, what Paul is referring to is Gentiles who did not look for God. Which God? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Describing what was happening with the Gentile believers in Jesus. Still God waits patiently for Israel. His hands are still held out to receive them, and they should not, I'm sorry, and they should turn back to him. Um, the scriptures say, all day long have I stretched out my hand to a gainsaying, disobedient people, meaning God is still extending his hand of grace out to the Jews, just like he's extending his hand of grace out to every Gentile that, that might believe on him. Amen. Um, God is a God of grace and, uh, just because he has allowed grace upon the Gentiles right now, well, I'm saying in my own selfish way, thank God that the Jews, uh, did not believe him because now it gave me an opportunity to be saved by grace. Amen. Um, had it not been for 
for the Jews rejecting Jesus Christ. The Gentiles never would have an opportunity to receive Christ as, as Lord and Savior. Amen. But thank God they rejected him. I'm um, not saying that in a, in a proud way. I'm just saying, thank God that they rejected him, that we all might be saved as Gentiles, right? So um, I'm grateful in that regard. And I'm still praying for Israel, right? With humility, Lord. I'm not saying that out of a spirit of pride. I'm still praying for Israel, praying, praying for the peace of Jerusalem, praying for the peace of the Israelites. But I thank God that I have him. <laughs> Amen. By the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank God for his blood that uh, he is the remnant for all of us uh, to be saved, for every Gentile believer to be saved. Amen. So I hope we got a good understanding from the lesson on today. Salvation for all who believe. If you believe in Jesus Christ, confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, not your heart that beats, right? But believe in your whole mind, soul, and body. If you believe Christ in that manner, you shall be saved. Amen. It's as simple as that. Amen. So thank God for the lesson on today. I hope you got a good understanding. I'm not Elder Stacker. Y'all be merciful to me in social media. <laughs> thank God for you tuning in with us today. And join us in the next uh, 15 or 20 minutes um, as we get ready to, to be blessed from the Word of God through our speaker on today, Elder uh, David K. Stacker Sr., I can call his whole name. I got papers on him. <laughs> so I thank God for, for hearing the word of God um, through him on today. Pray for him, and we'll look forward to, to seeing you on next week. Amen. And uh, hopefully next week, Elder Stacker will be back teaching a lesson again. Uh, so thank God again for you tuning in with us. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Thank you. <laughs>